Good morning, kids, and welcome to Karen Reed. Back again um, here in my living room in South Berwick. The book I have for you today is called Floodfish by Robin Eversall. Um, I didn't find that much about her except that she's written some books with really intriguing names like The Hug Machine, East Dragon, West Dragon, Skulls, and The Magic House. And she spent, you could tell from looking at her books that she spent some extended time in Australia. And the illustrator Sheldon Greenberg um, illustrated another book called I Never Knew Your Name, but that's all that I could find out about him. Okay, here we go. I need my reading glasses for this one. Floodfish. Let me show you the illustration before the words begin. That's the dedication up in the top. She dedicates it to the people of Crown Point Station in Australia. That's the name of a big ranch. It is so big, it's thousands of square miles, four times the size of your county is one ranch, and 7,000 cattle. That's as many people as there are in South Berwick. That's how big this ranch is. Okay. Near my house, in the middle of Australia, the river that was dry three years, you can see the little trickle. Just filled up with rain. When I swim with my hands spread like nets, I feel fish passing. Nobody knows where they come from. I think maybe the rocks feel water flowing so the sides crack open into gills. They learn to breathe water and flick their red tails. Or maybe the gum trees, heavy with rain, drop their slim, fish-shaped leaves, which float a moment on the water and then dive. All I know is last week this was dry land that I could write my name in and now there are fish, big fish. My sister says the moon sows fish eggs when the moon cries on the nights of high water. My brother says there is an underground sea. The rain breaks through the ground and lets the sea come out.
My grandfather says fish can dig. They leave eggs deep in the mud. So when the land is dry and the fish are gone, there are tiny caves deep underground where fish eggs glisten like old pearls waiting. Still, nobody knows for sure. All we know is the river floods and the fish come. When the river dries up, I find fish in the puddles. When the puddles dry up, the fish are gone. They leave no bones. Then it rains, a long, strong rain, and the floodfish come to swim with me. Now the cool thing is that even scientists don't know where the fish come from. They're still investigating it. So this boy gets to swim with them every once in a while, sometimes every three years about. Um, and nobody knows where the fish come from. All right, so it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Thank you for being with me today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Um, I actually just want to add a second book to that last book I taped today, because uh, that was a short book, Floodfish. So I have another a short one called Rattlesnake Stew. You can see the rattlesnake on the cover. I wonder what rattlesnake stew tastes like. Um, it's about a little boy named Billy who gets sucked up out of his bed into an adventure with some cowboys. And the writer is Lynn Rowe Reed, R-E-E-D. She's known for her 23 books that she illustrates and writes. And she's been doing this for 30 years. She's known for her sense of humor um, it's very quirky. Her books are quirky and funny. I think you'll find this book funny. And it's full of lots of round shapes. And then two words that you might not be familiar with. Billy climbs onto the back of a bronco. That's a wild horse. It hasn't been tamed yet, so it's hard to stay on it. Because as soon as you jump on it, um, it will try to buck you off. So that's the kind of horse that cowboys used in a rodeo and they have contests to see who can stay on the horse the longest. So Billy climbs onto a bronco and he also gets um, into a, a cowboy's camp and they're, they're described as cantankerous, which means they're ready to pick a fight with each other. They're quarrelsome. Okay, here we go. Rattlesnake Stew by Lynn Rowe read. A strong wind swirled and soared and whirled and roared and plucked Billy from his bed. And bounced him on his head into a camp of cantankerous cowboys.
Together, they twanged and yelped and hummed and heartily strummed. You could see all the cowboy mouths with their round circles of white teeth. They snapped stars from the sky and sang tune after tune. There's Billy snatching stars. Until they ran out of stars and lassoed the moon. They took their long ropes and twirled them all the way up to the moon until they snatched the moon out of the sky and brought it right back into their arms. The cowboys clomped and stomped their feet and prancing dogs danced to the beat. While nearby, grizzlies grumbled and growled. Billy climbed onto a bronco's back. So he's very brave. And the cowboys plucked needles from the cacti and flung them at wolves who were wandering by. Then the howling wind kicked up and whirled and swirled and sucked Billy out into the blue again. To his home, you can see his dog greeting him at the door. where his mom called, Billy, come in from the blue. I've made rattlesnake stew for you. And you can see Billy holding his dog. He's pulled up to the table behind him waiting for supper and rattlesnake stew. Okay, two books tonight with a little of my son's music behind it. All right, good to see you today, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.